every single one of the billions of proteins in your body was initially constructed from the same small set of amino acids. 20 are standard, and then there's selenocysteine. It's just like cysteine, but has selenium instead of sulfur. But why is it not standard? Serine has an oxygen in that position, and serine is standard. What makes selenocysteine different? Well, to answer that question, we first have to take a look at translation. Protein is made of amino acids, but the instructions, mRNA, are made of bases. It's the same information in different languages. So, to translate, the ribosome adds one amino acid for every three bases, called a codon. The translator in this situation is tRNA. The tRNA that matches to the codon CUA always has a leucine attached to it, so CUA codes for leucine. Naturally, we wanted to decipher the whole language, called the genetic code. We found that some codons are for amino acids like leucine, one signals the amino acid that always goes at the start, and multiple just tell the ribosome to stop. We finished the puzzle in 1967 when UGA was proven to be a stop codon. That gives us a total of 20 different amino acids. This is what makes those 20 standard. Nine years later, a selenocysteine residue was found in a protein. More and more of these proteins were found, which we called selenoproteins. Did this mean there was a 21st amino acid? Surely not. If all possible triplets code for those 20, nothing can code for selenocysteine, right? The answer came a decade later. Selenocysteine was coded for by UGA, the SOP codon. Hang on, how does the cell know the difference? After all, if it was just guessing, we'd all be dead by now. But the story gets weirder. In 1988, a group of researchers were investigating four genes that were needed to make selenoproteins, called cell A to D. They were using bacteria, but soon a similar discovery would be found in humans. They would start with an E. coli cell that had a mutation in one of the genes, so it couldn't create selenoproteins. Then, different fragments of DNA were inserted until they found one that could replace the function of the mutated gene. This is called complementation. When the cells had a mutation in cell C, the DNA that recovered protein production seemed to be creating a strange tRNA molecule that was much different to a normal tRNA. So, they checked the cell C gene itself, and they were right. It coded for a unique tRNA. It was the biggest tRNA ever found at the time, because one of the arms was longer than usual, and the acceptor stem was longer. The sequence was different at a lot of places everyone thought were constant for tRNA molecules. The strangeness didn't end there. tRNA molecules first have to be charged with the correct amino acid before they can be used to make protein. But even though this tRNA inserts selenocysteine, it was charged with serine, which raised more questions than it answered. Thankfully, we now have answers to those questions. Just two years later, we discovered that the mRNA for every selenoprotein has a hair loop structure. This was termed a selenocysteine insertion sequence, or CSIS. Remember cell B? It turns out cell B is for a special elongation factor, meaning it helps the protein grow, and it interacts with the tRNA and the CSIS element. Essentially, if you need selenocysteine, there will be a CSIS. If there's no CSIS, the UGA means stop. Selenocysteine gets its own personal tRNA and elongation factor. But what about why the tRNA is charged with serine? Well, sulfur and selenium are very similar elements. So similar, in fact, that if enough selenocysteine was floating around, cellular machinery would mistake it for cysteine and charge the wrong tRNA, causing problems in proteins all over the place. This can be avoided by using serine, which doesn't have this problem. The gene products of cell A and cell D help transform this serine into selenocysteine, and now it's ready to be inserted into bacterial protein. The human selenocysteine pathway is a bit more complicated, but the overall mechanism is the same. It's not too clear why evolution went to all this trouble for an extra option, but despite selenoproteins being the minority, 
they are essential. Without them, we run the risk of muscular, immune, and cardiovascular diseases. Technically, there are over 500 amino acids if we consider funky modifications, but only 21 are needed to translate human proteins. If we consider all domains of life, then we need a final 22nd amino acid. But that's a story for another day.